The first day of testimony has wrapped up in the trial of Kevin Monahan. He's accused of shooting and killing 20 year old Kaylin Gillis back in April. Prosecutors are trying to prove that Monahan acted with depraved indifference that night, while his attorneys claim it was an accident because of a defective gun. Mark Mahalan joins us live from the Washington County Courthouse right now. And Mark, you were there uh, all day for this. Yes, Rachel, good evening. Before the first witness took the stand this afternoon, the prosecution laid out the evidence and the timeline the jurors would hear presented over the next couple of weeks in this case. Then the defense came uh, with a new explanation for how exactly that fatal shot was fired on Saturday, April 15th. I wish they'd get out of my yard so I can go back to bed. Those, according to prosecutor Christian Morris, were the words of Kevin Monahan to a 911 operator on the night of April 15th, 2023, about the police in his driveway after he shot and killed Kaylin Gillis. This trial is about murder in the second degree, reckless endangerment in the first degree, and tampering with evidence. And the evidence in this case is going to be beyond a reasonable doubt that Kevin Monahan is guilty of all those. And there's one witness on the prosecution's list who we'll hear from for the first time. You're going to hear from Jinx Monahan. Jinx Monahan is Kevin Monahan's wife. Morris says Jinx Monahan was awakened by her husband telling her there was a motorcycle in the driveway. She's expected to testify that Monahan grabbed his shotgun and went outside. And while outside, she heard two gunshots. Morris says the couple went back inside and sat at their kitchen table. They sat there for some 20 to 25 minutes when a car comes up their driveway and puts a spotlight on their house. Police had arrived at the Monahan home. Prosecutors say after some back and forth, Monahan called 911 himself. He says several times, I was sound asleep. I'm an old man. The defense takes a much different view. This was a terrible accident. Somebody should realize that by now. Instead of repeating Monahan's claims that he was asleep and there are hunters in the area all the time, defense attorney Arthur Frost introduces this new explanation. This gun is defective. It's broken. It malfunctions. It will shoot even when no one pulls the trigger. Frost says a New York State police employee will testify about this. He describes Monahan as a scared old man who thought someone was going to break into his house. You will have to decide to act with an evilness, a wickedness, a wantonness, <coughs> a heinous disregard for the value of human life. Or was he a dumb, scared old man? with a defective gun. The defective gun theory coming out today during opening statements from defense attorney Arthur Frost. We bring in our own legal expert now, attorney Paul Darrow Hanessian. This is new. This was yeah. new today. Uh, Arthur Frost had told us that it was an accident, and now we know the theory behind the accident. What do you make of this coming out in opening statements today? Well, it was also new that it was the state police that gave him the best information, namely that the gun misfired or accidentally fired while it was being examined by the state police. So that's clearly going to be the heart of the defense in this case. The question will be in the the prosecution was hinting at this. How does it square with what the yeah. defendants said and did right after this incident? And the jury heard from uh, some of what Kevin Monahan said to a 911 dispatcher on the night of April 15th. And that doesn't seem to square with this theory because there was no mention of a gun mm -hmm. being fired at all in conversations, a 10 minute conversation with the 911 dispatcher. Correct. And you can expect to see the prosecution really hone in on that because so much of this is going to be the defendant's state of mind and whether that rises to the element of a depraved indifference murder charge. Uh, as we reported a little earlier, Jinx Monahan, the wife of Kevin Monahan, is on the stand as a prosecution mm -hmm. witness now. Mm -hmm. um, there are limitations to what she can be compelled to say, are there not? Definitely, and that's what the objection that the judge is dealing with right now, the communication between her and her husband. Generally, that's privileged. The question will be, are there any exceptions to that privilege rule of communications, such as concealing acts or actions, tampering with evidence, participating in the fruits of the crime. And in this case, we know there is a tampering evidence a ch charge, and the judge may be looking to see whether any exceptions apply.